My name's Sam, and I was the director of photography and editor for Arrowhead, the short film. I've always loved sci-fi films more than any other type of film because I like the idea of going to a film and anything's possible. When I go to a film, I want to see stuff that I know I can't see in the real world. Sam was a cinematographer on the film, and he really got the whole idea that we don't want to try to be too big. We don't want to do more than we can with the resources we have. So we really embrace that independent film style. I'm in love with those classic science fiction films from the 1970s, early Spielberg films, and I wanted to create my own universe. When me and Jesse thought about this feature, sci-fi just made sense. It was something that I've always loved and something I've always wanted to be a part of. But with this particular shot, I wanted to start here, and I wanted to like pull back across some, you know, just cool foreground elements, yeah. and then tilt around and end on reef. Then I want to push in on reef close, as a little thing lights up on reef screens. There's a big rumble. Basically, the creature outside is banging on the outside. Hi, my name's Ryan. I played the role of Kai in the short film. I was also the production designer, and I did the music as well. I had read the script uh, prior to starting this whole thing, and I really liked the idea and the concept behind it all, and I thought um, if I just started, you know, drew up some sketches for a costume, if that would get the ball rolling, we could kind of just start at the base level. Ryan had his hand in so many creative aspects of the film that he was really an uh, essential asset to the whole team. So it's kind of like every time he takes these, he's deciding whether he wants to live or die. Because he could just not take these and then die. Mm -hmm. And so, to put in context, he's just come back from hunting, but he couldn't catch the lizard, so he had to just go home and sad. A lot of the parts for the costume were actually just kind of found, found rubbish, garbage off the side of the road, you know, really, really cheap. Just little trinkets, little plastic bits that looked kind of cool. We just kind of just fashioned it all together from nothing almost. We've got the the boots, which was just made from uh, roller blades, where I'd actually screwed off the wheels and painted just to kind of make it look a lot more metallic. Uh, we also had the ring around the uh, collar, which kind of, to me, that's that's one of the main parts of the suit that makes it feel like it's a space suit or something futuristic like that. The interior set of uh, Kai's camp was actually built in our living room uh, over the course of a few weeks, a few months, uh, just kind of getting a whole bunch of big pieces of cardboard, setting them up and just seeing how they looked and then uh, sticking them together. I had to take them outside and spray paint them all. Watching this set be constructed in our living room was, was amazing. It was there for a couple of months while we hung out in our everyday lives. So. You know, I'd come home from work and there would be a spaceship right there in my living room that I could sit in if I wanted to. So I remember when I turned up to Jesse's house and saw what Ryan and Jesse had made and it was fantastic. It really blew my mind. The level of detail that was in the set, the paint, the reef had come alive, the calendar, the windows, everything had just, I don't know, come alive. It was very sad to see it come down after the interior scenes were shot, but it just made me stop and think what a, what a crazy life filmmaking can give you. You do such insane things just to get a shot into the camera and just to create a world that you don't even know if people will be interested in. One of the main characters was Reef, uh, the little computer system that befriends Kai. Creating Reef was such a good experience because I had drawn the concept art and he was such a beloved character to me personally uh, that when we began building him, I had sort of had to unthink the design that I initially had in mind. We used a lot of found objects to build a lot of these props, including Reef as a character. So it wasn't so much about how do we make him look exactly like our artwork, as it was what will he become when we use what we have. It was actually built from an old electric uh, typewriter we ripped apart, a uh, $6 TV, um, a dismantled camera, and uh, a vacuum cleaner. As soon as filming began, uh, I switched from a production sort of role into the uh, into an acting role. Um, I've never really acted or anything before. I'm not really a great actor, but uh, someone had to kind of step in and play the role. We'll have a proper actor in the feature film, um, one who can actually deliver lines and do dialogue properly. But uh, I think it did all right.
As for the uh, exterior locations out in the uh, desert, we basically took a 10 hour drive, few day trip uh, across the border into New South Wales. Being in the desert was amazing. There were so many great vistas that we eventually saw and some of them we could use in the film. When we first arrived though, we hadn't exactly scouted the location and we got there and looked around. There was so much greenery and shrubbery. Lugging gear for miles and miles and miles over some sand dunes and hills. Um, it was quite dune and hilly and um, we had a lot of moments where we thought, oh, we weren't going to get exactly what we wanted. It wasn't until we ventured beyond and um, explored, hoping that we'd see something that we eventually stumbled across this amazing landscape. And then I remember when we climbed one massive dune and we just saw the perfect location. So that actually ended up being our first shot that we actually shot in the desert, uh, which is the opening scene where Kai goes up the hill and reveals his camp down below. We shot it and we kept doing it shot after shot after shot and we kept doing it. We had to, every single time we made new footprints, we had to move about three meters to the left and we were running out of sand. But we eventually got the perfect shot and I think it looks really great. It's the first moment in the movie where you really get a sense of how big the movie's going to be. And after we'd done a whole bunch of takes, I remember standing there with Jesse next to me and watching the shot together and we realized we really captured something really great in camera. We took this natural desert and just kind of add our own little spin to it and just created a whole new universe out of it. It was kind of like how we uh, built a lot of the props, we just took elements from other objects and just created something entirely unique. We had a very small crew of only about 10 people, a lot of us have been working together for a few years. Christian Delessi is one of our key filmmaking partners, he did a great job of assisting Sam. Yeah, it's better. My shadow's out of that. Next one. Can I use the gold one? Okay, looking left, Ryan. Looking right. Back again. Wait for a second, you're like, is that what I think it is? And then just a quick look around, and then, and then a stand. Like eyes open, like they kind of do. Well, let's do that. See how it looks. Wait, wait, the move starts first with Tom and Ryan Action. Yeah, I like that framing a lot better. We can cut that. It's really cool. You can frame that and shoot in it over there as well. I love how you drop it. We also had Thomas Price involved, he's a visual effects artist uh, for a lot of Hollywood feature films and he came on board to bring some of the 3D elements to life as well. But I guess what Lucky was saying you can cut between them. And action! And put a lot of effort into creating essentially what we couldn't build uh, at the desert location. <laughs> yeah baby! So other than being the DOP and the editor, I was responsible for a whole bunch of the visual effects. Two thirds of this movie were effects of some kind. Um, either reef screen or Kai's wrist display or some kind of lighting effect or reef's eye. So for instance, the levitating device, we shot that scene literally with Ryan just holding a piece of string, um, bobbing it up, up and down in the air. And um, all the rest of it was done in the edit room. So the first thing I did was I put the planets in the background. Then I had to get rid of the wires because um, that's what it was hanging off some wires. So I had to um, mask those out. So even just one shot with one effect like that, it actually does a lot of steps to it. Even though we do love the idea of practical effects work, sometimes you can't avoid it. We built a small makeshift rig for Reef to be puppeteered on, which Ashley Akers, one of our crew members, uh, ended up manning. So there was a bit of uh, digital work to remove that from the final scene. Kind of want it to flap. Now you take the Although it was a really fun experience going out and shooting this short film, I really can't wait to go out and go back into the desert and shoot the feature length with Jesse. I have a lot of faith that he can pull this off. I mean, we shot this short film for like less than $700, and um, I can't wait to bring the monster to life and um, really flesh out some scenes that we never really got to do in the short film. Jesse's written some amazing stuff, and I can't wait to put that to screen. The beauty of filmmaking is really that it's just uh, the only art form where you can combine all the other art forms and it's just really 
great to be able to dip my hands in all these different parts of it. Arrowhead Signal is a very small taste of what's to come. And yes, it is a proof of concept teaser for the main movie, but it's also a short film in its own right, and that's why it was so fun to make. It's the first time in the movie where the audience is wowed and um, it really gives that special feeling. <laughs> 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 Not special feeling. <laughs>